through the shed blood of Jesus, your sins have been forgiven. God holds nothing against you. He put it on Jesus, and Jesus was judged on the cross for your sins, sickness, and disease was put in his body. And on that cross, he died on that cross, and he was buried in that grave. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead to give you eternal life. When we start this teaching today in this area, it's going to bring knowledge to you. Now, Jesus said, you shall know the truth. In John chapter 8, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you what? Free. What kind of truth? It's the truth that you know about yourself, what God's word says about you. Say with me, I am in Christ. Everything that Christ has, I have it. Everything he possesses. I possess it. All authority that he has, I have authority. I believe it. You see, the kingdom of God is the rule of God, the reign of God, is the government of God. It is the, is the presence and power of God inside of you. So the first thing of understanding the kingdom, how the kingdom works, we got to understand that the kingdom works by faith. The kingdom works by faith. Say that with me. The kingdom works by faith. Say it again. The kingdom works by faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. And it is written, the just shall live by faith. We're moving into this area of how the kingdom works now because, number one, you got to understand that the kingdom works by faith. Many people are being destroyed because they don't understand how the kingdom works. Even though they've got everything they have need of, it's already within them, but if they don't understand how it works, then they can be destroyed. They're taken captive. Especially in this time right now. You see, I have to preach this and teach this because I see a lot of believers, they're beginning to, they're beginning to pick up ways of the world. They're beginning to pick up the language of the world. And they're talking all down and out and talking fear and talking doubt and talking, you know, sickness and disease and all of that. But you understand something, that's the world that you're going to live in and that's the world that you're going to have. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be defeated. I cannot be defeated because I found some of the knowledge in the word of God who I really am in him because all that he has, I have it. All that Jesus possessed, I possess it. Now, do you believe that? See, that's important. That requires a mind renewal. He said, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And the just literally means what? Those who have been declared righteous on the merits of accepting Jesus shed blood as a sacrifice for their sins. Glory to God. I, I was hearing a, a story about a man. And uh, the man got in the challenges in his body and the sickness came against his body. And, and uh, he asked the people to pray and the church prayed and he was praying. And uh, he got better. He got better. And then all of a sudden, he started thinking about his past. He started thinking about his past as, you know, like, hey, you know, I did this. I messed up over here. I mistake over there. I committed sin over there. And, and all this stuff started coming back on his mind. And before you know it, the sickness started coming back. It started returning. And, and as, he, as they put him in the hospital, as he went in the hospital, there was a nurse in there, and there was a Bible. Somebody brought a Bible in the hospital, and he told the nurse, he said, nurse, get that Bible. He said, Open it up random. Just open it up random. 
And it fell on Psalms 130. And she read a verse out of that, Psalms 130. And it says this. If the Lord shall regard iniquity, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be feared. Hallelujah. When she read that, he believed, and all of a sudden, his body began to change back. Sickness began to leave his body. And he got better. Go back to that verse again. Right here it is. Say with me, if thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? In other words, if God is out marking your iniquities, marking your sin, remembering them, and you thinking that you still having to deal with it after you came to Christ, you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and you've been declared righteous through the shed blood of Jesus. You have forgiveness of sin. You have no right to go back and to negotiate with the enemy and try to get back and say, oh, look at the guilt, look at the shame, look at, you see, it's supposed to be over. I said it's supposed to be over. Because it is over. God, God forgives you of your sin and he casts them in the sea of forgiveness. He don't even remember. Turn to somebody and say, don't go fishing for it then. Don't go. <laughs> you listen to me, those that are watching my live stream, listen, that the enemy is trying to challenge you over your faith over situations coming against your body, coming against your home and family, and you begin to think about, well, some I did or, or some, you know, I shouldn't have done it. Some, uh, and see, when you get into that arena, watch out. See, the enemy can eat your lunch then. He can, he can do whatever he wants to do. But the just shall live by faith. I said the just shall live by faith. You... Through the shed blood of Jesus, your sins have been forgiven. God holds nothing against you. He put it on Jesus, and Jesus was judged on the cross for your sins, sickness, and disease was put in his body. And on that cross, he died on that cross, and he was buried in that grave. And on the third day, God raised him from the dead to give you eternal life. See, God looks at us in our current state and sees us in our intended state.